Hi, my name is Robert Lee, and I'm part of the Coherence development team. So I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about some of the, um, some of the features we have in uh, the Coherence 3.6 release, uh, which we uh, broadly speaking call uh, Quorum. We have a concept of Quorum on the cluster level. When I say cluster level, I'm really looking at um, cluster membership, right? The um, ability to join, become a member, uh, and potentially get kicked out of a cluster. Um, so what I want to take a look at is, you know, historically we have, um, you know, we have this problem called split brain, and split brain is really, you know, it's not so much a problem. It's it's a state where you that you can end up in if portions of your cluster uh, become disconnected from one another um, due to, say, for example, a network failure, right? So, um, you know, if we have, uh, let's say, a cluster of 10 machines over two racks, and, you know, the interconnect between the two racks goes down, well, the, the picture from each of the machines is that while the other five machines, you know, the other four machines on their rack are reachable, but they can't see any of the other five machines. They've become completely disconnected from the, the machines on the other rack. Um, so coherence will go into what we call a split brain mode, where each, each result, you know, each surviving side of the cluster will, you know, will survive on its own. It will decide that the other five, you know, the other five machines are gone. Um, and what will end up happening is each rack will continue running um, kind of in isolation. Um, they'll each think that the other side is dead and will kind of go on running and we call this a split brain because now we have you know really two sources of you know of truth right um, you know the problem with split brain is that the the semantics of correct are really application specific right so it, it really comes down to what does it mean to your application for there potentially to be two surviving bits of the cluster going on um, you know, and there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can slice this, um, but at the end of the day, there's no one right way to handle this. Um, you know, the, you know, we have, we have logic in place to, to resolve the split brain scenario should the two sides, uh, become reconnected. But for some applications, it, it's just not desired to begin with to allow the split brain to occur, right? So for example, if we, going back to our previous example, if we have, um, 10 machines split over two racks. Well, for some applications, you know, again, because we've done the provision and we've done the resource planning, for some applications, it just does not make sense to continue um, unless we have both racks there, right? So it doesn't make sense to even enter into that split brain. It doesn't make sense to, um, to kill off the other, uh, the other five machines. What, you know, what really should be done is, well, the cluster should kind of be suspended and, um, you know, sort of awaiting uh, that network connectivity to be restored. Uh, and so what we have is we have this concept of cluster level quorum, which allows us to uh, control, again, either via uh, configuration from out of the box policies or uh, via, you know, a custom policy implementation, but it allows us to exert some control over how coherence will uh, enforce member timeouts. Um, you know, if you recall, uh, coherence has uh, packet timeout, which kind of which uh, defines an SLA, if you will, on uh, the maximum amount of time a packet has to uh, be sent, received, acknowledged, uh, and returned. Well, <clears throat> before you know, pre three six, um, exceeding a member timeout would result in uh, the member being killed. Uh, what the cluster level quorum allows us to do is to exert some control over how those timeouts are handled and whether that timeout results in the member being killed, in which would result, uh, in my example, which would result in uh, a split brain, or uh, we can sort of enter into a suspended mode, right? So again, going back to my example, um, where if we have two racks and the inter interconnect becomes disconnected, uh, we could supply a cluster quorum policy that says, well, you know, I, I really need 75% of uh, the machines to survive. So, you know, since, since this network event would cause me to lose half of my cluster, I'm not, you know, I, I don't want to enforce that timeout. I don't want to enforce that SLA. I would rather tolerate these members being 
unreachable for some period of time, then removing them from the cluster. And so what that allows us to do, again, is just exert some control over um, how we respond to the timeouts and how we respond to the SLAs, whether we want to actually remove the members from the cluster or whether we want to uh, tolerate um, you know, a network disruption knowing that if we you know, were to take more invasive action, we might enter into a split brain scenario. Um, so <clears throat> to summarize, um, in 3.6, we've, we've introduced a number of, kind of a number of uh, features that, that are all targeted towards um, kind of configuring uh, and exerting a little bit more control over, over how coherence behaves uh, in the absence of the you know, expected or anticipated or planned for um, physical resources. And we can do this uh, both at a service level, which allows us the control, you know, the fine-grained control over service-specific behaviors, um, cache rights, distribution, proxy connect, things like that. Um, and we also have control over, um, you know, at the cluster level, where we're looking at things at, such as, you know, how we respond to uh, member timeouts, uh, member join requests, things of that nature. So I hope this was informative. For more information, please take a look at the links included in the description section of this video found below. And thanks again for watching the Coherent Screencast series.